In today's video, you're going to watch me color grade my real estate footage from start to finish using DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're new to DaVinci Resolve, consider this a mini tutorial on how to color grade. Or if you're looking to make the switch from your current editing software over to DaVinci Resolve, the color grading workspace is probably the biggest reason to do so. And if you continue watching, you'll see why. Greetings fam, back at it again with another tutorial and today we're diving into DaVinci Resolve's color page to see if I could convince you to make the switch from your current editing software over to Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. I had previously made a video explaining my reasons for making the switch. If you missed that video, click right here to catch up. But let's stop wasting time, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, welcome to DaVinci Resolve's color page. You will know you're in the right page if your screen looks like this or you could come down here to the bottom and see that your color tab is selected. Already in the timeline, I have a clip from a recent real estate shoot, and I'm just going to show you my color grading process to get this to look the way I want it to. Just to give you a quick tour of what's going on on the screen, over here is where we have our preview, so any changes we make will show up here. To the right of that, we have our node tree, and I will explain what's going on in the node tree as we add nodes and make our adjustments. Down here towards the bottom left quadrant is our wheels, our color wheels. We have three types of color wheels. We have our primary wheels. If we click on this middle dot, that's gonna bring us to the second page of primary bars. With primary bars, you have control over the red, green, and blue channels of your shadows, your midtones, and highlights. Then if we click on this third page, we have our log wheels, and this is different than our primary wheels, and I'll show you what the difference is once we get to it. In this middle section, we have our qualifier, or our curves, or our masks, or 3D tracking, and all this other good stuff. Today, I think we're just going to mess around with either curves or qualifiers. We're not going to get too deep into it, but I just want to point out that it's there. And over here towards the bottom right corner, we have our keyframes. Or if you want to see our scopes, we click on the icon right next to it. You can see it says scopes. Click that. And from here, you get to select which scopes you want to view. For me, I prefer waveform. And we're just going to play around with this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is click on my first node, right click, and hit node label. And this will be our exposure now the benefit of the node tree and being able to label your nodes as you make your grade is you just get to keep track of everything you're doing and if there's anything that you want to change after the fact you could always go back to that specific node and make only that change as opposed to affecting the entire image so in this first node we're going to play around with our exposure and we're going to do that by coming down here to our primary wheels. And we will see three wheels called Lift, Gamma, and Gain. Lift is the equivalent to Shadows. Gamma is the equivalent to Midtones. Gain is our Highlights. Offset will affect the entire image. So any adjustments we make here will affect the Shadows, Midtones, and Highlights equally. So for now, let's just mess around with our Shadows. So I'm going to go over to this Lift wheel. And instead of the colors, I'm going to go to this wheel down here, and that's just going to adjust the exposure of the shadows. So I'm keeping an eye on my waveform and seeing where my shadows will fall. So I'm gonna take this wheel, drag it down towards the left, bringing my shadows down. Now, I'm not trying to crush my shadows, I'm just trying to darken them up a little bit to separate them from the highlights. That looks okay. Now gamma or midtones, they look pretty okay. They look somewhat in the middle. I might boost it just a bit. So when using primary wheels, whatever you adjust, it's going to pull slightly the other two regions. So if I push my midtones any direction, it's going to slightly pull the shadows up or down. Same thing with the highlights, just ever so slightly which would mean I would have to bring my shadows back down to where I had it before. 
and highlights highlights i'm not going to touch because you could see that they're already blown out here now if you remember from before i had mentioned that there's also the log wheels by clicking on this third dot now we're in log wheels and the difference between log wheels and primary wheels is that your adjustments that you make to these wheels are going to affect only that region so for example if i'm going to push the shadows any direction keep your eye on the waveform it's only going to affect like this bottom part of the waveform as opposed to pulling everything down with it see that see how it's only adjusting the bottom part of that waveform highlights aren't moving barely any midtones are moving same thing if i do it with the midtones same thing with the highlights so it's just a more precise adjustment versus your primary wheels. Down here towards the bottom, we could add some contrast. So let's see what happens if we boost this up just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's probably too much. Maybe right there. Now pivot will adjust your contrast, but it's going to just shift that same amount of contrast to favor either the highlights or the shadows so if I push this in either direction you could see that that contrast is going up or going down the amount of contrast is the same it's just where it's placing it is different and for us let's go let's favor the highlights so I'm just gonna keep it at zero now over here we have LR and HR that stands for low range and high range and these control how much your adjustments will bleed or expand into the midtones. So to illustrate this real quick, I'm going to push some blue into the shadows. So you see all that. And pretty much everything looks blue because most of our image is in the shadow region. So if I take my low range and crank this down, we will see that the image starts becoming less blue. But the blue is still only in the darker parts of the shadows. Now, if I want the blue of the shadows to expand into the midtones more, I'm just going to take my low range and then crank that up. So you see how the low range will affect how much the shadows are being pushed into the midtones and highlights. And the same thing goes for our highlights. To show you that real quick, let's reset this to zero. Let's inject blue into our highlights. And right now you see that the blue is only in the brighter parts of our image. And let's crank this down so that way our blue highlights expand into our midtones. So let's reset this. Now the low range and high range could be used to adjust the exposure of the blackest parts of the shadows or the brightest parts of the highlights. And again, you could expand that into the midtones as much as you want. Okay, so as far as exposure goes, we'll start with this. Let's add another node. You could add another node by right clicking on the existing node and click add node. Now here you get to select which type of node you wanna add. For this tutorial, I'm just going to add a serial node. And what a serial node is, you can think of it as an adjustment layer, much like the ones that you would see in Premiere Pro or Final Cut, meaning whatever adjustments I make here will be off of the information that I'm getting off of this node or this layer. Now, there are different layers, which I will probably go over in a different video. But for this tutorial, we're going to try to keep it simple just so you get a brief overview of what this color workspace can do. So let's right click on this second node, node label, and we're going to adjust the white balance. So WB for white balance. And I have a cheat when I go on my shoots. I use the x right Color Checker Passport video. So that way I get accurate colors no matter what the lighting situation is or what color temperature is dominating the room. And I do that by simply, if I scroll to the beginning of my clip, I just hold the x right Color Checker Passport in front of the lens, make sure it's in frame. And now, if you remember my tutorial on the x right Color Checker Passport video, we could easily, so easy, get perfect colors. So I'm going to click on this icon here for color match. I'm going to get my color chart. 
If you missed that tutorial or that video, I will have the link in the description below. All right, our chart is lined up. I'm going to make sure that we have the right color checker selected. Then I'm going to click match. And now we have accurate colors. Let's scrub back to our hero frame, somewhere around there. We could get rid of this chart by going to the bottom left and click off. So now that we have accurate colors, I'm better able to see where the exposure needs to be pushed a little bit more. So let's go back to our exposure node, come over here and click our wheels. And I want the midtones to really pop. So let's push the midtones just a little bit more. First, let's go back to our primary wheels. So that way the adjustments are more global. Pushing the midtones a little bit more. Okay. Let us drop the shadows. Whoops, not too much. Add a little bit more contrast. Highlights I'm not going to touch because we're already starting to lose some detail. If anything, let's try bringing it down to see if that does anything. It doesn't do much. Maybe a little bit more contrast. Now I want to try to bring back some of the details from outside the window. So let's go to our log wheels and see if we can drop the highlights a little bit. If that's not working, let's try page two. And over here we have highlights. Let's drop that down. Okay, we're getting some details back. I'll probably park it around here. All I'm looking for is to not have this completely blown out. While we're here in our log wheels, let's darken up the shadows just a little bit more. Okay, so it looks like we're almost done, but I'm going to add another node. You could also add a node by holding Alt and hitting S. That adds a serial node. And I just want to brighten up the walls a little bit. So I'm going to right click, add node label. I'm going to name it walls. And how I'm going to brighten up the walls is I'm going to use our qualifier. That's this region down here. If you don't see this, you're probably on curves or power windows. Just click this eyedropper and you will be in qualifier. Now to select only the walls, I'm going to use our luminance bar. And to be able to see what I'm selecting, I'm going to come up here and click highlight. What this highlight does is it's going to mask out everything that's not selected within my qualifier. So I don't want any of the shadows. I don't want any of the flooring, the beams, none of that. I don't want the TV. So in luminance, all of that stuff is going to have low luminance. So I'm going to eliminate or remove anything with low luminance. Push this bar towards the right. And you could see that highlight mask starting to cover up everything that I don't want. Um, let's park it maybe here. Now, since the top end of the luminance is still selected, so are our windows. And if I'm going to brighten up everything else, those windows will be overexposed. So I'm going to pull this down until our windows are masked out. That should do it. So I'm really just trying to select the majority of the walls. So you could see a lot of the qualification missed a bunch of stuff like this part of the floor. And it's also very noisy. So I'm just going to come down here to Matt Finesse. I'm going to denoise everything. So that way everything comes out more smooth. Now there is no one set way to do this. You just play around with these settings to see what works for your particular image. Okay, so we're just going to try this qualification for now. It did miss a bunch of stuff, but it should go unnoticed anyway. Now I said I wanted to brighten up these walls. So this part of the wall is in the shadow area. So our qualification has that part selected within our walls node. I'm going to come down here to our shadows or our lift and then just give that a boost. Look at that. Before, after. 
before, after. Now there is some imperfections over here. You see that? You see these hard lines? I mean, if I didn't point it out, you probably wouldn't have noticed. But we're going to see if we could clean that up just a little bit. But I do like how bright the walls look now. So let's turn back on our highlight and see if we can refine let's try let's try this denoise the hell out of it blur radius let's feather everything out and we'll just see how that looks okay not too bad everything is blended a lot more evenly so before after just to give the walls a slight pop now let's add another node by holding alt s and we will play around with our saturation and we're going to come down to our primary wheels. Saturation is defaulted to 50. We're just going to boost this up a little bit to see how that looks. Okay. Kind of like it right here, maybe. I don't want to overdo it because then it just looks unnatural. Uh, 64, 65 ish. Everything looks vibrant, everything looks bright, it looks inviting. Let's mess around with the contrast just a bit more. Let's drop our shadows. Dropping the shadows should help out with some noise. All right, that looks a little better. Now, the lens I use for these shoots is the Laowa 9mm f2.8, and it does have some pretty heavy vignetting. So to counteract that, I'm just going to add another vignette, but in white. So let's add another node. We'll label this vignette. We're going to come up here to our effects. We will search for vignette. We'll drag that on top of this node. And you can see that adds a pretty crazy vignette, but we're going to change the color to white. We will Bring down the size, bring down the anamorphism, change up the softness to make it fit, maybe somewhere around here. And blend, we're gonna bring it all the way up so that way it's not blended. Then we will slowly push the blend to the left, slowly introducing the white vignette, just to counteract a little bit the vignetting from our lens. Probably a little bit too much. Let's bring it down slightly. I'm not trying to make it obvious there's a white vignette, but I just want enough that it hides enough of the lenses vignetting. Maybe something like this. So we could turn effects off. And we're looking pretty good so far. Now the last thing I do is I want to denoise all of this crap. So you see how much noise is in the shadows. We're going to add one more node, Alt S. This one will be for denoise. So I save denoising until the very end because while I'm making adjustments to the exposure and the saturation and all that, artifacts are going to come out in the image and denoising after everything is done is going to hide those artifacts. So making sure that my denoise node is selected, I'm going to come over here and select motion effects. I'll zoom in so that way you get to see the noise disappear. And for noise detection, I just max it out. I go five frames. Let's go better. Let's do large range of motion. And over here is going to be the 
denoising threshold. So how much of that detected noise will be reduced. So I just push this to the right until I no longer see noise. That looks pretty good to me. So before, after. And then when you zoom out, that noise will be unnoticeable. And there we have it. I hope you guys found that tutorial informative. It is just a sneak peek on how to color grade in DaVinci Resolve. As I learn more, I hope to pass that information off to you guys. If you did find the video informative, don't be shy to show me some love. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.